A very good morning to you, God's people at Delta Freedom. I teach you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us open with a prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, it's on this Sabbath day we bow before you in praise and worship as we honor your greatness. We also gather as a grateful people and we give thanks for life and all the blessings in it. We give thanks for Jesus, who has cleansed us by his blood. Bless us this morning as we ponder your word. Give us open minds and hearts to receive from you, Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We take our scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 18, and we read from the 21st verse to 35, 21 to 35. The subtitle there is The Parable of the Unmerciful Servant, and it reads, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sin against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered. I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began to settle, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled his debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went back and told the master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had it on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of us unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. This is the Word of God. Thanks be to God. My theme this morning is forgiveness. In our Gospel reading, Jesus uses a parable to show us God's mercy and compassion. We as Christians are compelled to imitate this forgiving spirit. 
This is no easy task. Especially when we have suffered hurt and pain through conflict. I am aware of families, friends and acquaintances that have for years bore grudges and have had no contact with each other. Just think of all the love lost, time wasted, personal bitterness and unforgiving heart causes. Unless one party has mercy and compassion, relationships cannot be healed. Jesus calls us to be that party. We are forgiven as we forgive. This is our prayer. To forgive someone 77 times may seem extreme. But let us take a moment to consider how many times we have sinned in our lives and God forgave our sin. I am aware of the breakdown of marriages today and, many, and the many social and community problems that stem from these breakdowns. Confucius, a Chinese philosopher, once said, Happy couples make happy children. Happy children make happy families. Happy families, happy communities. Happy communities, happy countries, and so on. He almost got it right. He failed at the start. All things begin with God. God forgave our sin in Jesus' name. Without forgiveness, how can we begin to love ourselves? If couples remembered why they got married in the first place, they would find that love and forgive each other. There is no stronger emotion than love. In relationships, you cannot love without forgiveness. This ability to put pride and arrogance aside and replace it with mercy and compassion is the formula of forgiveness. Today, with all our challenges, stress and animosity, we are in a perfect position to practice this forgiveness. Our most merciful Jesus, whose very nature it is to have compassion and forgiveness, invites us as Christians to follow him. So we clothe ourselves with forgiveness. My prayer is that we as Christians accept this invitation. Take time to search our hearts and minds and rid ourselves of any feelings of resentment that we carry. Remember, if we are bound in this life with an unforgiving heart, it will be bound in heaven. So I encourage you to make the healthy choice this both physically and spiritually. Forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. This is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church and those who carry your gospel. We continue to pray against this virus and lift all of those who suffered because of it. Lord, you know the hearts and the minds of your children at Belt of Freedom Park. So we commit all their concerns to your power and might. Bless your word that we have received this morning and help us practice it. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with us now and evermore. Amen.